Sandag Board Chair Nora Vargas sat down with a KUSI to talk about a lot of issues, a 35-minute conversation in total, uh, talking about the state of the county, and one of the topics touched on was SB 357 that makes loitering with intent to sell sex legal. Anti-human trafficking advocates are urging local and state leaders to change, change that bill. Here is her response to that when it came up. One of the things that I've done really well is work really closely with our advocates on the ground who have been making sure that human trafficking is a priority for us. I think everyone knows, I think the DA was on here earlier this morning. Um, you know, we are working very closely with her and with law enforcement to make sure we do everything we can so that uh, young people have the information that they need and we don't, young people don't end up in these situations, right? So uh, for me, I think I'm looking at every piece of legislation very closely and then as a board we'll make a decision. But what I'm really focused on is ensuring that people focus on prevention, that we don't have young but people. But would you anymore. agree that it was a, a bad law that just had these unintended consequences? I mean, we we heard the chief of police yesterday talking about how this has had really negative impacts on our community. Well, you know, I think what's really critical is that sometimes what happens is, um, you know, unintentional uh, consequences uh, for our communities with legislation is real. I think what we have to do as local uh, elected officials is to do everything that we can in our power to make sure that people have the resources that they need, that we work really closely with law enforcement and the district attorney's office so that this doesn't continue to happen. And so that I think is what my priority is, right? Um, folks can go to Sacramento and advocate all they want. I have to do the job right now and make sure that people are safe and that our kids are staying healthy. And so that's what we're doing and working in partnership with the DA's office. I don't know if but you have know. have you taken a position on 357? I have not taken a position on this issue. Well, joining us now with reaction to that comment right there is the president of the People's Association of Justice Advocates, Mr. Shane Harris. Shane, two conversations in the span of five days. We have to stop yeah. meeting like this, buddy. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, last week, both Carl DeMaio and Nora Vargas appeared on your news station uh, and both disregarded my leading push to repeal SB 357. Carl DeMaio called me a clock. Uh, that a uh, broken clock that is right twice a day. Um, wherever Carl is, I don't think he can count. Um, well, last year when he was leading the gas repeal tax effort on the state level, he couldn't even manage to get that on the ballot while I put gas in thousands of San Diegans cars. But uh, Shay may I interrupt you, but yeah. you both are on, the, we should say this, you both are on the same side of 357 though, whereas Nora Vargas is is I, I'm, getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting to Nora Vargas. Okay, okay. Um, I just want to be very clear that both have disregarded my efforts. When they were asked about my leading efforts on this matter, they both disregarded. Nora Vargas, same thing, uh, disregarded uh, the efforts. Uh, look, the reality is that a bill went into law. Nora Vargas was not in the state uh, uh, legislature. Carl DeMaio was not in the state legislature. Todd Gloria was not in the state legislature. But this law is innately uh, causing more harm than doing good, right? In, you know, well-intentioned laws have unintended consequences and like this situation here. Uh, so SB 357 uh, is a law that created a, a whole lot of issues with, the, with allowing and making legal the loitering with an intent to sell sex. And I asked Nora Vargas and the Board of Supervisors via letter to issue a, uh, uh, bring agendize a board resolution to push for the repeal of SB 357. When she says that, uh, you know, we're doing everything we can locally, I wanna know what she's doing. Because Marisa Ugarte is in her district, in, in her district in National City, been leading anti-human trafficking effort, efforts for over 30 years. Uh, and that's the bilateral safety corridor. She hasn't met with her to find out what's going on on the ground. She hasn't done a ride along. Carl DeMaio hasn't done a ride along. I'm the only leader who has gone to do a ride along in National City and see what's actually going on. I saw a 16 year old walking the streets with nearly nothing on last week when I went to tour uh, National City. So I don't want any of these leaders talking about what they're doing until they come out to actually see what's going on. And uh, Nora Vargas disregarded the question 
around SB 357. She disregarded the letter that my office sent to her last week when she was asked about, and the only reason why I'm addressing what I said is because she was asked about Shane Harris's letter, Shane Harris's request to the Board of Supervisors, which she received. And so I hope that Nora Vargas does the studying and does the reading and goes out in tours to actually see what is going on in National City because it's a mess what is happening on San Diego and National City streets. And the Board of Supervisors oversees 2,500 children in the foster care system. I talked about why I'm pushing for this repeal. 60% of human trafficking victims are foster youth. So I want to know what books these folks are reading. Both Nora and Carl disregarded the efforts. While, meanwhile, I have actually led on getting statewide push and support. A now a councilman up in Oakland, Councilman Gallo, who sits on the Oakland City Council and is a Democrat, is supporting our efforts to repeal this law. I've gotten mayors and I've gotten police chiefs and I've gotten anti-human trafficking advocates across the state to support this effort of pushing for the repeal. So I hope that these folks understand the importance of this law and we need to put politics and disrespect aside to get to the core meat of why we need to get this law repealed. Yeah, I, I guess what I think is important is bipartisan support. So that's why I want to keep stressing you and Carl are on the same side of the issue. You might not like what he, the way he said it, but the fact that we have two people on opposite sides of the aisle that support this repeal is significant. And I think that's what we have to, to create a snowball rolling here is bipartisan support. Do you not agree? Yeah, but, I, but I think, Paul, you know, I think it's important to note, yes, we are on the same side of this issue. However, when someone makes and disregards efforts, you ask Carl, hey, Carl, what do you think? Do you think that this is something that you guys can partner on? And he answers you, oh, a broken clock is right twice a day. That disregards the effort. See, the effort is let's work together. Let's get this law repealed. It shouldn't matter what someone's opinion of someone's political leadership or someone's historic stances on a variety of issues are. And I think that's why I'm calling both of these leaders out, because neither one of them have gone to tour to see what's going on in National City. Neither one of them have the experience that I have. I spent 13 years in the foster care system. That should give me some precedence to have an understanding about how this is harming children and youth. And so I think that it's important that we understand that the effort here is a statewide effort. It's bipartisan. It's nonpartisan. The law had well, it was well-intentioned, but it carries unintended, unintended consequences because it, re it actually protects the pimps and the panders and specifically those who are seeking to take advantage of our youth and our children more than it actually protects the victims. How? Because a police officer, I watched last week, a police officer had to pass up a young lady, 16 years old, who went up to a car three times and that car drove around the block and he couldn't do anything because the pretext stop is over. So he can't get the victim to talk about what's going on. Then the those who are taking advantage, the Johns and the pimps and those who are, are, are at the top of the ring, uh, uh, leading the ring lead, leader here, can't be taken down, the real criminals. I think that is why this is so important. And I urge everyone to stay focused on the real goal here and not take political shots. I know it's frustrating that someone like me could actually build a statewide issue on this, that someone like me is getting statewide attention on this, that someone like me has been able to organize both Democrats and Republicans to say that this is wrong and we must get this repealed. I know it's frustrating to know that someone spent 13 years in the foster care system and has a pointed enough view more than anyone else has the most relevant view on why this is going to hurt that 60 percent that the FBI reported that on all major cities are going to be affected, those foster children. So I am very well skilled and an and, and, and expert here on this matter, and I will not stop until this law is repealed. I will not stop pushing for this. And I urge everyone to have a bipartisan focus, put your politics aside, and let's saddle up and solve the real issue here. The real issue is that children and youth's lives are at stake. Well, on that note, we'll call it a conversation, Shane. Thanks for making time for us, and I'll, I'll see you down the road, probably in another four or five days, right? You will.